think most people in this country would have known the name Jerry the Monk Hutch even before the Regency or the feud with the Kinnahans. He's a well-known criminal figure in this country. He was part of a gang known as the Bugsy Malone gang in his, in his younger days. He's to this day, he's one of the chief suspects in two of our, our the largest robberies in the state, which was an armored armor car raid in Marino Martin, 1987, and a, and a raid at the Brinks Alley Depot in Clonshock in 1995. Now, over the last number of years, he's he's kind of kept a low, much lower profile. He has, hasn't had convictions since he was a much younger man. He did come to a... Uh, a seven-figure settlement with the Criminal Assets Bureau in the late 1990s, but that effectively is who Jerry Hutch is. Now, by way of background to what happened at the Regency, his nephew Gary Hutch was a senior lieutenant in the Kinahan cartel. He was one time best friends with Daniel Kinahan. Um, that relationship soured and he was ultimately assassinated in Marbella in, 1990, or, sorry, in 2015. Um, there was then an attempt made on Jerry's life in Lanzarote the following New Year's Eve, and these events formed the background to what happened at the Regency, which was a very well-planned, highly organised attempt to murder Daniel Kinnan. He escaped and they murdered one of his closest associates, David Byrne, instead. So um, what led, what events led up to um, him being charged in relation to the Regency attack? Because it rumbled on for quite a while. It did, yeah. Um, the members of the Hutch gang were identified as suspects in the Regency very early on in the investigation, but it wasn't until the end of 2020 that the DPP instructed that the Guardian had enough evidence to charge Jerry Hutch with David Byrne's murder. Um, then in April 2021, the High Court in Dublin um, issued a European arrest warrant for, for Jerry Hutch's arrest. He wasn't then arrested until he was tracked down in Frangarola in August 2021, subsequently extradited um, the following month, and he appeared before the Special Criminal Court and charged, was charged with David Byrne's murder. And then, of course, his trial got underway then last October. The key prosecution witness in the trial, of course, famously, is um, <clears throat> Jonathan Dowdall. Um, but I suppose when we talk about him, we need to know who he was and what his uh, link was with them and why he was such an important witness. Jonathan Dowdall was an electrician from, from <coughs> the North Inner City originally. He grew up close to the Hutches. He knew, would have known Jerry Hutch growing up. He was particularly close to Jerry's brother, Patsy Hutch, who was Gary Hutch's father. Now, um, uh, Jonathan Dowdle got involved in local politics. He became a Sinn Féin councillor in 2014 and before leaving the party the following year. And then because of his connections as Sinn Féin links, he was asked by Patsy Hutch to go to Northern Ireland to see if he could round up some Republican contacts to help them mediate in this feud with the, Hutch, with the Kinahan gang, particularly after Gary was murdered. Um, he made several trips north um, prior to the Regency. He made at least two north following the Regency with Jerry Hutch. And it was during one of these journeys that the Gardaí managed to uh, plant a listening device on the car and record a number of conversations mm -hmm. between the two men, which kind of, uh, he also, sorry, he also, um, Patsy Hutch also asked him to book a room in the hotel the night before the Regency, which he did so with his father. And on this basis, he was charged himself with the murder. Um, and he was, he was due to go on trial with Jerry Hutch for, for murdering David Byrne last October. But uh, days before the trial was due to start, we heard this uh, bombshell news that the murder charge against him was dropped, that he'd made a statement against Jerry Hutch implicating him in what happened to David Byrne. And he would become a state witness and ultimately be entered into the witness protection programme. I know, and I suppose we, we know from the reports on that trial that ultimately the, um, his testimony was, wasn't given as much credence as the prosecution had hoped because um, of his falsehoods in the past. Well, well, this, this is it. The, the case against Jerry Hood's kind of like hang, hung on whether the three judges believed what Shannon Dowdle had to say. There was absolutely no independent evidence to back up anything he said. There was no CCTV. There was no DNA, no forensics of any kind that would put, place Jerry Hutch even in the country on the day that David Byrne was murdered. And he, he had famously told lies before. He went on Joe Duffy and lied about his life being persecuted by the Gardaí, even though we later found out that he was involved in a very, very horrendous um, torture of a, of a man who wanted to buy a motorcycle from him. Um, and because of this, the judges kind of said his evidence had to be treated. Just wasn't a credible witness. He, they yeah. said he had to be treated with extreme kind of scepticism because, like, his interest was effectively he was given his, he was acting in his own self interest by mm. testifying in many ways, yeah. and it couldn't be relied upon at all. Um, tell us, Michael, what impact do you think the Regency attack has had on the kind of world of organised crime here in well, Ireland? Well, the reason the police the, deal with it. The Regency was a landmark day for I think in Ireland. It's up there, I'd say, with. with stuff like the murders of Veronica Geerwin or Martin yeah. Cahill. It was used, not necessarily because of the identity of the victim, but certainly the sheer audacity of it and the wave of violence and murder that followed in its aftermath. 
Um, it made household names out of people like David Byrne, his brother Liam Byrne, and it certainly made a household name out of Daniel Kinnan. We had guard, they were guarded, were given extra resources. We had like armed guardy were on the streets. There was checkpoints. Uh, um, it, was a, it was a scary enough time in the city, but there was also there was a special, um, there was a second special criminal court, which was, uh, which was brought in straight after it, um, and we're still kind of feeling the effects of it today. Even now, like the guardy have done an amazing job in kind of quashing the quashing the feud. There has been a feud murder since te December two thousand eighteen. It's not that long ago, though, really. Mm. Is it? It's it's not, not but but those two years certainly following what happened at the Regency between two thousand sixteen and two thousand eighteen, it was horrendous. There was seemed to be a, certainly in the for the rest of 2016 it was on average a murder connected to the feud every month wow. mm. um, for the rest of that year and it went on until for, it rumbled on for the next couple of years so um, it's been kind of the dust has settled very much in that respects over the last kind of recent years. Jerry Hutch now, where is he? Is he really gone? Is he ever coming back? Good question. Yeah, because, is he still in Ireland? Yeah. Well, after after like he was the Scarlet Pimpernel. Yeah, after, after he? he was acquitted, we kind of um, we, we thought he would head back to Spain almost immediately, but he didn't. He hung around Dublin for a number of weeks. But we do understand that he has since left the country. He's gone back to Lanzarote, um, and whether he stays there for how long is anybody's guess, I guess. Does he have much of a portfolio in Spain? Do we know? He has. He has a. He has a. Well, he's a large property portfolio. He has strong ties to the country. He has um, his arrest made headlines there. Um, his arrest exhibition made headlines in Spain. A further afield, and, and with the whole Kinnan situation, I um, mean, they're uh, because of the connections to boxing. They're well known globally. Um, there's an FBI bounty against the, the leaders of the Kinnan cartel. So. It, it, is, it is a global news story and has been for the last seven years. Do you think it's ever going to be possible for someone like Jerry to have, I don't want to say a normal life, her face? Is it ever possible that this story will just go away and he can walk down the street and people won't care? Or is this because of this, is there even going to be more scrutiny on him? Yeah. Well, certainly because I'd say there is going to be more scrutiny on it. I mean, I mean he, he, he's in, he is in Spain at the moment. We didn't know that he might not be as well known in Spain to the Joe public on the street that he is perhaps here. Um, so it, it, it's, it's, I guess, I guess it, he probably can. I, so I'm sure he can. I'm sure at some point the point will arrive where, where Jerry will be able to kind of uh, keep his head down and walk well, down the He street. doesn't have to go to an island off a rent to go on his holidays, well, basically, like Daniel. Like yeah, I, saw, I was reading the headlines yeah. this morning in, in connection with that. Yeah, that's, that seems to be... The, their profile, certainly, I would say, is probably if not bigger than, than Jerry's at the moment. Yeah. Certainly, certainly they're, they're, they're wanted uh, profiles. And like Michael said there, he just needs to keep his head down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, you. Um, thank you so much for joining us on no the show problem. today. It's a fascinating story stuff. Uh, straight out of the movies, really, isn't it? Now you yep. can catch The Monk. A free man tonight on Virgin Media 1 at 9pm.